so excited to be with you today representing an emerging generation of change agents and new foot soldiers who are going to continue the movement for justice and equality that was begun not just 50 years ago, but hundreds of years ago. And so today I'm so excited to be able to address you for just a few moments. I want to say that this week, this, this whole month, is so important to the city of Montgomery, city of Selma, to the county of Lowndes County. This is so exciting because we get a chance to look back and to also get the strength that we need to press forward. And I think that we all should take a moment to give a hand of praise to God for the foot soldiers of this great movement that has gotten us to where we are 50 years later. We can do much better than that. But I have to be honest with you. As a 20-year-old, 20 21-year-old senior pastor, a, a member of this generation, I'm very concerned about what will be said of us when the history books are written concerning this generation. What will they say about us? What will they say about us 50 years later? What will they say about us 100 years later from today's day? Will they say that we were complacent in the face of so many great challenges? Or will they say that we confidently and courageously confronted the issues of today and we move forward to walk in the footsteps of those who came before us 50 and 100 years uh, ago? What will they say about us? Will they say we were just dreamers? Or will they say that we worked with great determination to make dreams come into reality? What will they say not only about us, but you should be asking yourself today, what will they say about you? What will they say about you? And so I'm very concerned. And so today I want to just share a few words with you, a word that I hope will not only fit into this reenactment, but a word that will revive us, a word that will cause us to get up and to use the resources that we have. Believe it or not, we have more resources available at our disposal than were available 50 years ago. And so there is no excuse for us to get up and to continue to advance the movement addressing the problems of today and of tomorrow. I don't believe that that's going to be a problem of this group because I believe that we have a bold group with us today. We have a courageous group. We have a determined group. I've seen many of you marching uh, along Highway 80. I see many of you, the courage and the passion that is within your hearts. And so today, I don't want us to, to be so caught up this weekend, this month, in just reenacting or remembering. But I want us to take up the mantle. I want us to step into those shoes. I want us to know that the world is not looking for the next Martin Luther King. The world is not looking uh, for, for, for the next Harriet Tubman. The world is not looking for the next Bob Mance or Amelia Boynton. They are looking for the next great you. Because no one can be as great as you are. When God created you, he created you with DNA that no one can replicate or imitate. He wants you to be the greatest you that you can possibly be. He wants you to know that you can make a difference with the gifts and the talents that he has given unto you. You know, we've come many, 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 many miles uh, 50 years later. We've made much progress, but I want you to know that we have not arrived. There's so much more to be done. We are still faced with issues in our society and throughout our world that needs to be addressed. And so for us to sit and to celebrate as if we have arrived, it would do a great injustice to those who worked so hard to get us to where we are. What they did was lay a foundation. They gave us their shoulders to stand on. And so we must continue to march forward. But I have a question today. Where is David? Where is David? 
as a, as, a, as a preacher of the gospel, I always look throughout scripture to figure out what Bible story can can fit the moment. Mm. And I've looked and surveyed so many instances of biblical stories that may work well as I speak to you today. But the best one is a story that is all familiar to us, the story of David and Goliath. You see, 50 years ago, they understood that they were faced with the Goliath. And that Goliath is still living today. That Goliath that, that, that Goliath of inequality, that, that Goliath of bigotry, that Goliath of racism, that Goliath of, of educational inequity. We have to face Goliath. But for every Goliath, there's a David who will step up to Goliath and not be afraid. For every Goliath, there is a David who will say, if no one will confront you, I will come at you if I have to walk alone. And you have to be willing today to advance the cause even if you have to walk alone. You don't advance the, call, the, the cause because it's popular. You don't advance the cause because it's what everyone else is doing. You advance the cause because you believe within your heart that there is work to be done. In fact, 1 Samuel 17 records the story of David and Goliath. And everyone else was talking about how big Goliath was, how great he was, his reputation that no one could defeat him, no one could destroy him. And David said, I'm going to take it a little bit further. He said, I'm not going to just look at Goliath. I'm not just going to say how big or great Goliath is or how impossible it is to defeat him. He says, I'm going to go out there and I am going to utterly destroy Goliath. And all I'm looking for throughout this audience today are the people who are ready to face Goliath. Where are you today? You know, they looked at David. David was young. David was young and he was not trained in the art of warfare. His brothers were much more attractive, much more groomed than he was. In fact, he wasn't even his father's preference. He was the youngest of them all. He was the overlooked of them all. And I want to take this opportunity to speak to someone who has been overlooked by people. People have counted you out and said that you cannot do anything of significance. You need to look at them and say that age is simply a number. Age does not define my ability to make a difference. Age does not define my ability to make an impact in the world around me. Age will not be my limit. Age will not be my excuse. In fact, I will take my age, I will triple it, I will double it in my maturity, and I will go out and make my own mark in the sands of time and in the history books. Are you ready to make a difference? But here's what you have to do. You have to make up in your mind that there is a cause. You have to make up in your mind that there is a calling that God has upon your life. There's an old hymn that, that people sing uh, throughout the church. They say, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. That's not just a hymn uh, that we sing in the church. It must be a personal conviction that you have deep within your heart that I have a charge to keep. In honor of those who have come before us, I must keep and accept the charge. And I have a God that I must glorify. The movement was not about any single individual. Those who we see that were at the forefront of it, they were not at the forefront of 